Okay, nice. Good. Are, are we um, are we ready to take a look at this? Okay. Okay. So so here's here's a model which um, is exhibiting um, is exhibiting sort of uh, interactions between individuals and social networks, where each person um, is uh, we have males and females represented. Their weight status is distinguished. Their, their diabetes status, and we have um, some representation of pregnancy where this state is restricted to females to enter. Um, males have the other characteristics but aren't allowed to enter this state. And, um, and then there's some representation of physical activity of an individual that is dependent upon physical activity of their network. So individuals who are connected with other individuals who are higher physical activity, engage more moderate to vigorous physical activity, will themselves be more likely to, to exhibit moderate to vigorous physical activity. Um, uh, it's, it, it's a model with some, some um, uh, sort of curious features to it. But the main thing I wanted to focus on at the moment was something that really doesn't, doesn't directly um, isn't contingent on the model's uh, area of focus too much. I'd like you to open up main and go to parameters. And under parameters, you will see something that I'm not sure any of you have seen before. Okay? Um, and this construct is one that you will find me, uh, Lin Hui, teaching about, and in fact, introducing in those videos that I shared with you. But, um, and I'd be happy to share them with others. But it's a somewhat more advanced topic than I had time to cover last year during my, my, my um, most pleasant visit here. So if you, go to, if you go to Maine here, you'll find that within parameters, there are two parameters that are intervention related. One is called is eligible for intervention Another is called perform intervention for person. Now, what distinguishes these parameters is the fact that they are not merely numeric values. Traditionally, I referred to parameters as, as um, encoding assumptions. And in fact, they undertake two tasks. They, number one, they encode assumptions. Number two, they communicate those assumptions from the point where a given construct is created to where to where it's used. So for example, for a person who's embedded in a population, the population will specify the parameters for that person. The person is created by that population and is told what to assume for its parameters by the characteristics of that population. Um, births are another way in which they could be told or, or when they're immigrating. Um, for Maine, the parameter values are set by the, by the experiment. Now, in this case, and I'm glad Rock is watching, because this may involve some scratching even of the rock. Um, okay, um, so uh, here, ladies and gentlemen, these parameters are something different than a normal parameter. Normal parameters we might have encoding numeric quantities, right? Maybe it's the cessation hazard to use for the model. Maybe it's um, true or false, whether an intervention is to be simulated at all. Maybe it's um, the name of the run to use. Uh, maybe it's um, the, the size of the population to assume. All of these can be encoded as parameters, say in main. Hmm? Yes. Um, so, uh, normally we have parameters encoding values. What this is though, this is something different. This is a parameter that is actually describing, as it were, a function. It's describing a rule, an algorithm, okay? So if you go to is eligible for intervention, this is what's called, ladies and gentlemen, a dynamic parameter. And this is a little bit of a confusing notion, but it's a profoundly powerful notion. And it's a notion that I hope 
to elucidate for you here. So, ladies and gentlemen, um, these dynamic parameters um, describe a rule. They describe a, a sort of, um, uh, rule is a good way to put it, an algorithm, a sort of way of indicating something. So when you have is eligible for implementation, it's not asking for a, for a number or a true or false. What it's actually asking for is give me a rule that will tell me who's eligible for an intervention. Okay, let's go look at the other construct we're going to be looking at. Perform intervention for, for person. This too is not a number. Perform intervention for person is described as an action parameter. What that means is it's a rule also. It says do this thing for a person, in this case, who's eligible for the implementation. So ladies and gentlemen, if I may, I would like to introduce you to how these are used to show you a few, implement, a few examples of their implementation. Okay, so the first thing I'd like you to do is, is to go to the baseline. For the baseline, we're going to have no interventions in place. So for the rule for whether someone's eligible for implementation, I'm just going to say nay. I'm going to say they're not eligible. In short, it will return false. That's associated with the baseline. Okay? Okay. Um, and because it's false, because no one's ever... Um, eligible, I just leave the perform intervention for a person blank. It doesn't matter. Everyone, no one's subject to, to intervention, so I'll leave it blank. Now watch this. Um, I'm, I'm now going to go examine a, um, a situation where we have a, uh, a, uh, an intervention which is going to intervene upon pregnant women, okay? It's going to intervene upon um, specifically women who are pregnant. So the people who are eligible for it are, and take a look at this, I just selected that, enhanced physical activity among pregnant women. I went and looked at the parameters here, and what do I see under is eligible for implementation? Note that it is, it is um Emboldened. Does anyone know what this means, that this is emboldened compared to this? Why is this color darker? Can anyone tell me? Riddle me that. It's changed. It's been changed from the baseline. Okay? The fact that this is, actually, it's been changed from the default value. So the fact that I changed this. And let's look at how I changed this. For is eligible for implementation, what is my rule? Can anyone unpack for me? Is eligible for implementation? This is going to answer true if the person is eligible for the implementation, false otherwise. Under what condition will this person be eligible? If they're pregnant. Where did this candidate person come from? Well, that's, that's the name of the person that's the candidate. How does it know it's the name that's the person that's the candidate? Well, it turns out when I defined it, I didn't go into this. But basically, for this so-called dynamic parameter, I say, okay, if you give me a candidate person, I will tell you a Boolean value back, true or false, for whether they're eligible, okay? And similarly, you know that here, perform intervention for a person, I'm going to tell, you say, if you tell me the person on whom to intervene, I will do my job on that person. I will intervene upon them. Uh, so here, let's go look. Let's go look, enhance physical activity among interventions. This is performed only among pregnant women. It's performed only on whom? Pregnant women. And what is it going to do? It is going to set their physical activity to be the minimum of, well, okay, it's going to be no more than one, but otherwise it's increasing their physical activity level by 40%. Um, it's setting their physical activity level to be higher by a 40% value. In other words, the new physical activity is 1.4 times the original one. Okay, so here, for this particular experiment, 
I am simulating an intervention that's restricted to a subgroup of the population. Let's go take a look at another one. Let's take a look at this one. Elevate physical activity by 20% low SES among low SES population. Now, I'm going to ask you, what do you think that's going to say? <laughs> okay, yeah, it's going to ask, is that person low SES, right? That's what it's going to ask. Um, and if they are low SES, it's going to change their physical activity level accordingly. What I'm doing here, folks, may seem modest. It may seem, you may wonder why I'm so excited about it. But um, actually, what I'm excited about is that each experiment, ladies and gentlemen, can specify its own rule, its own uh, guidelines, its own criteria for intervention, separately from others. And that has power to it. So we can have one one of these that's, that's restricted to low SES. We can have another one that's for pregnant women. We could, we could have some that increase physical activity by 80%. Uh, you notice this one, physical activity by 80% across the population. Well, um, I'm gonna ask you, what do you think that is? What do you think it'll say for is eligible? If it's across the entire population, can any riddle, one riddle me that? Suppose the intervention is in effect across the entire population. What would is eligible be? True. It would simply be true. And so it is. Just the irenic way, um, as predicted. Um, so it's true. And if that person is intervened upon, that it increases their physical activity by, by 1.8 times. So here, ladies and gentlemen, we're, we're, we've created a mechanism that goes and allows us to specify on a, and on a experiment by experiment basis, different intervention strategies, different intervention criteria, and different intervention implementation. Now, this model is not graced by the by capturing the, the sort of dynamics of the intervention of the other. With your leave, I will show you how this intervention is captured in this model, okay? Um, okay, so I'm going to go to main here, and I'd like you to look under, other, under the events. And you'll notice that there's an event called perform any initial intervention. What does this event do? Well, at time zero, it goes off at the beginning time of the model. We could set it to go off at other times, set it to go off two years into the model, for example. And when it goes off, for each person in the population, it's going to determine, for each person in the population, and Rock, you, you should pay attention to this. This is going to stretch, stretch the rock um, greatly. Um, hopefully, it won't melt the rock. Um, Okay, it's going to, for each person in the population, it's going to determine is that person eligible for the implementation? If so, it'll perform the intervention on the person. Okay, that's all that does, perform any initial intervention. That, in short, is how these, implement, these, these interventions are specified. So, what I don't want you to do, now this, again, this may seem like not a big deal. Um, Maybe you think it's a Canadian thing while well, I'm so excited about this. But actually, it's, it has great implications because the way my students used to capture this gives me the willies. Um, sorry? Oh, it was horrible. Do you want me to tell you? Yeah. Okay. I'll tell you. Okay. What they would do is they would go, so suppose they want an intervention, okay? What they would often do is go to the model, go into main, hard code that intervention, and save it away as a separate model. And basically, it would say, it would go through at the start of the model and, and find all pregnant women and increase their physical activity by 80%. And that would be a separate copy of the model than another one that focused on low SES. And that would be a separate model for one that increased it by 40% among people who are pregnant women and low SES. And each of these would be different versions of the model. 
Now, that gives me the willies for several reasons, but one of the biggest ones is if you need to change the model, you need to go change it in every one of those versions. And it's, as they said in King Lear, as Shakespeare said in King Lear, that way lies madness. Um, it's, it's here, what we're doing is we're capturing it on an inter, on a experiment by experiment basis. We can capture whom to intervene on and in what way to intervene upon the person. That way is much more contained. That way lies sanity. And, um, and this right now does not capture the dynamics of the intervention as did the model that we saw just a few minutes ago, this model with these sort of peer educators and training, training, et cetera. But it could. It actually could capture aspects of intervention rollout if one was determined to do so. Um, I'm not going to cover how because time is a ticking and uh, we have some additional topics to cover. But um, suffice it to say that by, by treating this intervention as a rule, you know, for eligibility and a rule for what to do, we can specify it in different experiments in a fashion that's very elegant and allows us to specify an experiment by experiment basis, what intervention to implement, whom is eligible, and, and we can use that to then compare interventions much more easily than if we were to hard code those interventions into the model structure, which is a, a quite unseemly uh, action. Okay, yes, Rock. Two questions, so the first one is that you have a symbol, you have an arrow symbol, what does that mean? And the second one is, can you actually compare it to different scenarios and outputs and then compare it to different graphs? Yeah, uh, okay, so I'll deal with each of those in turn. You mean this here? Well, this is one of the things which is stretching the rock. Um, Okay, um, so so basically what this is saying, okay, um, so what I'm basically saying is, okay, for each person, give for, for each person in the population, for each thing in the population, call that thing person, and for that person, determine are they eligible, and if so, perform the intervention. This actual symbol, is meaning this is actually a function. This is how I specify a function in Java. I can specify an anonymous function in Java 8. Mm -hmm. So I, this is actually a function I'm giving it. I'm saying for each person in the population, apply this function. And it will go through, and, and for each person in turn, it will do this thing. Next person, do this thing. Next person, do this thing. And each time it does that, for each person, it's determining if they're eligible, and if so, performing the intervention on them. So it's kind of marching through each person, the whole population, and saying, was this person eligible? Is that one eligible? And that eligibility could be based on rolling the dice. It could be based on their age and sex. It could be based on their income profile. It could be based on their history. It could be based on any number of different things in general. Is it like a for loop? No. Oh, like what? A for loop? It's like a for loop, but it's a more beautiful thing than a for loop. <laughs> it's a more beautiful thing. Um, it's, it's, yeah, it's uh, for for several reasons. It's it's uh, it's got some extra um, uh, merit associated with it, but um, but basically you're going through each person and you're applying this. Could you do it as a for loop? Yeah, I could do it as a for loop. And um, what that for loop would be is exactly this um, for person person in the population. We will go and put this code. In fact, I'll even take the curlies around it. There we go. And and boom. There we go. And uh, if they're eligible, remember your indenting rock. Um, there. That, it, would, it would be sort of roughly equivalent to this. But this this has greater beauty. Um, it's one one line. It's sweet. Less less to look at. Um, yeah, um, it, it, there's also things where things can be done in parallel, et cetera, but um, anyway. Um, so this is how you can do targeted in, in interventions without hard coding them into the model, okay? So I know that's a bit advanced. Uh, I apologize for whom, those for whom that, you know, that, that didn't resonate, but it is something that's a very powerful technique. Okay, um, 
So those are some comments on interventions. I'm going to be trying to draw those together in a single model. Um, oh, yes. Yes, second question. Thank you. Yes, indeed. Um, okay. Um, so the second question is, how do we compare? How do we do a comparison of these? Well, for that, I would encourage you to download a separate model. And it's a model that's posted on your website. Um, and it's a model um, that involves um, health economics constructs. It's actually designed to show how you could, among other things, compute cost of, um, incremental cost effectiveness ratios. And it is called, um, it's called basic, oh yeah, it's in the hybrid models area. It's called basic health economics. Uh, any logic seven, and if you were to go open that um, hybrid basic um, uh, okay sorry it's uh, hybrid models and basic health economics here we go um, so i'm I'm opening it here, and uh, here what we'll, we're going to see is uh, we're going to have some accumulations of qualities, quality adjusted life years and life years lived across the population, accumulated undiscounted costs and discounted costs, and uh, generally speaking, it's, it's going to be accumulated these quantities that are of, of interest on a per scenario basis in health economics terms. So quality adjusted life years are one of the sort of workhorses that are used for determining incremental cost effectiveness ratios, which are used to compare the, the added, uh, sort of the, um, whether you're getting bang for the buck for the added benefits associated with a given intervention. Um, I'm not gonna go into all aspects of it, except to note, but I will note that it's based on a similar activity-based costing model, where in each health state that someone was in, you, you, you determine their quality of life and their cost per year associated with that health state. Another model, which I think I may have given you, also has, um, considers multiple conditions. So it considers diabetes and heart disease or something like that. Okay, but let's continue to talk about it. So each of these states, you set uh, a cost per year and it's accumulated up at the main level. So that's all fine and good. but. Let's suppose you wanted now to compare two different scenarios, right? You're, you're running this thing. You want to compare um, how much, what's the gain from one scenario over the baseline? Hmm? So suppose I undertake an intervention, and I want to compare how many lives have I saved, or how many cases of obesity have I averted, or how many accumulated life years of obesity have I averted? Um, how would I do that? Because there's a baseline scenario, and then there's a, an intervention scenario. So by, by what we've been doing, they've typically been run separately, right? Here's the baseline. Here's an aggressive prediabetes prevention intervention. How do I, how do I reason about the gain, you know, the, the, the gain in terms of, of, of lowering the burden of health, health burden, um, by, by using the intervention. Well, there's really three ways, okay? And one of the ways is, is uh, the manual way. And I won't criticize this. It's, it's something to be quite useful. And that is I would, I would run this model in a way that I would accumulate some data, and I would then export that data to R, for example, and I would compute in R or some other package, I would compute the difference between, you know, the accumulated costs or the accumulated, you know, incident cases of obesity or what have you for the baseline and from the intervention. I could do that in R. I could do it for different runs, right? So I'm a big R user, I'm a big R fan, and we actually have an automated export tool that will export data from these models directly into R, and it will suck it into R automatically. It'll just suck it in. And, it, um, and, that, and then it allows you to, 
to then uh, as a data frame to analyze it. That tool is written by one Winchell Chen. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a sweet tool. Yeah, it's very powerful. Um, so um, so that's a useful tool, and you can run it on. Uh, you don't have to modify your model in any significant way to do it. It can do it automatically um, in a wind chillian fashion. Um, so uh, so that's one way. Okay. It's, it is manual in the sense that you got to do the computation in R. Let's talk about the second way. Okay. The second way um, is by putting in place what's called a parameter variation experiment which is one of those supported by your software. So if you go File, New, Experiment, you will find that you can choose between some types. And I think one of the types that you can choose from, can you tell me here? If you do File, New, Experiment, I think one of those types should be Parameter Variation. Yes. Some of them are grayed out, are they not? Yes. Um, uh, and I would just note, compare runs is grayed out? Yes, it is. Okay, so parameter variation experiment. So, um, parameter variation experiment, basically Rock allows you to run your model several times, okay? And what I provide here is a parameter variation experiment, which basically runs my model twice. You notice number of runs, too? For the first run, it uses a, uh, a pre-diabetes prevention hazard of, of zero. Otherwise, it uses 0.25. In other words, the baseline uses zero. Um, I have a per non-diabetic per capita intervention screening cost per year. So the baseline is zero. Otherwise, it's 200. Uh, lifestyle intervention cost per year is zero. Otherwise, 5,000. So what I've done is I've encoded a baseline and then an intervention here, okay, using this. And then, and there's a bit of finesse here, but um, I, I actually extract these numbers for each run, I extract the numbers, and then I will actually calculate, um, uh, calculate the difference uh, between them. Um, and, uh, and that occurs uh, at the end of the simulation, as I recall, that we, we accumulate the difference. So, so I actually run the model several times. For each scenario, I'm accumulating the um, uh, sort of what, what the outcome was for that scenario. And then um, I'll perform cost-effectiveness calculations where I actually take the difference for incremental qualities, what's the difference for scenario one, for scenario two, and I'll, I'll take the difference, same thing for cost, life years lived, undiscounted cost, and I'll actually, um, uh, I'll calculate these uh, incremental cost effectiveness ratios, discounted cost per quality, for example, gained. These are quantities which are the common parlance of, of uh, incremental cost effectiveness analysis. And and these, these quantities um, compute them. And this perform cost effectiveness calculation is triggered, if you go and you look at it, um, it's triggered uh, right here after an, in, uh, after an iteration. In other words, after it's run both runs, it will trigger, hey, perform them. So in other words, Ross, Ross, it is performing several, yeah, not Ross yet. Um, uh, Rock last week, rock this week. Um, uh, it is performing several runs of the model, and then it's comparing the, dif the differences between the pair of runs to determine what's the extra gain of the intervention, what's the benefit of the intervention. Okay? So that's one way to do it. Okay? Another, the final way to do it, which I'll just note, how to compare to, and I, I see um, there may be a time for a break here. Um, is sorry.
Yeah. I also have a video on this online where I present this. So, yeah. Uh, you, sure. Sure. I'll see if I can send you the link for it. Um, it's, uh, yeah, I, I have, in fact, a three part discussion of building up this particular model. And the third part discusses exactly how I added this in and so on. Yeah. Um, it makes me so happy when my videos can help people. That's great. Um, yeah. Can. Okay, it's a good question. So I actually can perform, although I, I don't show it here, uh, you can perform a, um, a multi-replication um, run of this. And this will allow you basically with different seeds to run it for each of those scenarios. So in this case, I could run it 10 times with, with, um, um, with, with the baseline and 10 times without the baseline and, and work on the differences. But I'm not, I'm not actually doing that here. That may be video four. And that will maybe come. But, but right now, I'm not doing it. Absolutely, and and we routinely, you know, use a hundred or more replications per, in other words, realizations per scenario, and we'll compute statistics based on that and using non-parametric statistics like the Komogorov Smirnov test or the Man Whitney one-way U test. We'll compare. We'll compare those. Those are non-parametric, so they don't make normality assumptions, and we'll compare the outcomes. And you can actually include it in the model. Yeah, you could. Yeah. Um, yep, you could do them in any logic. We've also done them in R before, um, you know, just exporting data. But but you could do it. Uh, you could do it either way. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, it doesn't provide built-in support for Man Whitney U test or or Kamal Gross Murmoth test. So you'd have to use an external library that does that. But but yes, you can do it. it it's it's readily accessible. Okay. So the third way of doing it is only available in the professional edition, and that is you do experiment, and then you do this compare runs, okay? And compare run experiment allows you to basically, um, uh, to sort of, uh, you know, change, change certain parameter values between two runs, and, um, and then it can, it can allow you to sort of compare a chart chart types for these. So you can actually have a chart and and see, okay, um, you know, you want to see what the chart looks like for this run versus for that run. And so you could see it all in one chart. Now you can do that with my strategy, which pointedly does not require the professional edition. Um, but it is an option once you have the professional edition to actually add in a new experiment that that does support this this compare runs. And I would note that once you add it in, that you can then use it, um, use that experiment um, in, in various, uh, various, you know, you, then they could run it. It's just that to build it, to add a new experiment, to add it, you need professional. To reuse it, you don't need professional. So if you have an existing experiment that uses it, you can make use of that. But yeah, yeah, um, yeah. That's yeah. It's it's just the convenience of comparing it, uh, of creating a new one is is limited to professional. Using it is not limited to professional, which is you know n not so restrictive actually. Yeah, um, and uh, and and this has some. Um, um, has has some benefits in the sense it makes it very easy. But my strategy here is it will get you a, a long way, and I'll see if I can elaborate to do multiple replications and and compare each of them, and and those will induce multiple replic. It's sort of uh, statistics related to uh, variability uh, in incremental cost effectiveness ratios, for example, for different runs. So so that's that's good. Anyway. It's readily it's readily done. If you go to 
to the video where I build this, you'll learn more. If you go to a video that I recorded um, in Sydney, Australia in April, or excuse me, yeah, April, end of April, or you go to a video that I recorded in North Carolina last year, you will further see me build up interactively a parameter variation experiment from scratch, which, which will help you be much better understand what's going on here when you look at what's, how I do things in this particular run. But um, like, like this sort of stuff, you'll learn how that's done. And I will try to send those videos as well. But those will get you up to speed. Okay. Yep. Yep. Good. Um, so those, uh, that concerns, you know, comparing outcomes of different interventions. Uh, I agree that it's much nicer to do in any logic rather than just exporting and doing the, the, the work in, in R, but, but that is the final recourse if you have to do it. Yeah. And I must say R's, you know, number of available charts and statistical machinery support support for for these non-parametric measures is very good so it's it's a real asset okay any questions about that okay okay time is a ticking okay um so so i've in mind covering just a few additional things that were flagged as high priority but does anyone want to bring up any questions right now Sure. Sure. There we are. This list. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I've I've kind of done I've kind of done these um, these things. Um, I've commented on that driving models forward. We've done some of that. Um, Unpacking the causal pathways, we did that nicely. Okay, five compelling hybrid model patterns. I could do this in about 20 minutes if you want. Um, that might be worth seeing briefly, just to know what's possible there. I also have a, have a whole page of videos and, and sort of um, a, a central video on it, but I could do justice to it in 10 to 20 minutes. This is hybrid. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thanks for the suggestion. Do I do a Sure, sure, sure. I wouldn't mind that. I'm tired. Um